there's a certain syndrome I think affects many reviewers. After seeing so many games pass through our desktops, we start grasping for something new and interesting to cover. Regardless of whether or not those games were good, they start to blur before long. There's only so many times you can say, it's well made, it doesn't explode your computer, it doesn't call you more cow and all that. So please forgive us if once in a while we get excited about something vaguely unusual we can cover, and Franbo certainly qualifies as something vaguely unusual. Any game that gives you a visual like this absolutely falls under that category. So you'll probably be wondering how exactly Miss Bo got into such a bizarre situation. Well, I can tell you the story, but I honestly don't think it'll help. Once there was a young girl named Fran Bo who lived a happy life with her parents, her lovely kitty baby Mr. Midnight, coupled with the odd visit and babysitting session from her aunt Grace. One night Fran sees something odd outside the window. She wanders up to her parents' room to find them literally in multiple bits on the floor, holy shit fuck the what. Fran runs from the house which is somehow bleeding and collapses in the woods, where she's found and carried off by a hooded figure, likely to the mental hospital she wakes up in, as it turns out this is the flashback she's having during a therapy session. After a brief talk with the doctor, Fran is returned to her room where she resolves to escape and reunite with Mr. Midnight. And as before, before we see what this place has done to our fellow residents. The game will jump between these adventure sections punctuated with minimalist black and white and sometimes red cutscenes and the occasional minigame I suppose you'd call it. There's one like Frogger or there's this one button race thing which must surely have a better genre name that I've never heard of. They sound simplistic but they're not actually bad minigames and they provided me with a refreshing contrast after a long puzzle session. They even managed to make a decent maze. I usually think mazes in adventure games are a lazy way out of designing a decent puzzle, especially if they use random exits like Torrent's Passage or heavily restrict your view like in Loom. Actually, I'm pretty sure Loom did both of those. Franbo's effort is better. Not too long, you have something to follow and there's the added skill element of spoopy monsters to avoid, although they could easily be looked at slowing you down too. And even if none of that was any good, there's a skip button. Don't like the minigame? Click one button and back to the puzzles you go. Good way to please the people who like a quick change and those who only want the puzzles. In fact, let's do the rest of the interface while we're here. It's two button controls. Left and right click are use and look, with use also covering the picking up of items. The inventory screen gives you use, combine and examine options. In here, use is normally for using items on things in the world. Use object, click on the thing you want to use it on. Except for this box which you need to unlock. That one's inconsistent and actually got me stuck in the game for a while. This is why I keep insisting on consistency, folks. It's very easy to overlook a puzzle possibility if you're sure you know what'll happen when you try it. And while we're in the inventory, why can't I drag items onto other items to combine them? I don't see the point of making that a separate button. And on a nitpickier note, what's the point in numbering these inventory options if pressing the number keys does nothing? That's just teasing. At least you can warp through almost every exit in the game with a single click. Woo yay, check that one off the list. There is one more part of the immediate interface I need to talk about, and that's this pill icon here. When you click it, something like this happens. The game's pretty mysterious as to what actually happens here, or at the very least it's up for interpretation. Is this a skewed perspective or disturbing alternate version of the world Fran inhabits? Is this showing reality as it truly is, free from whatever filter the rest of us look through? At least to many a, uh, did that really happen, moment with the supernatural covert experimentation and genuine mental illness all presented as possibilities, and maybe not even limited to a mere one of those. To bring this back to game design for a moment, the pills work as a way of expanding possible possibilities as well as telling the story. You've essentially got two versions of each room to explore, one of which isn't even bound by conventional laws of physics. Plus, they can tie this back into the storytelling, and there's one puzzle in particular that exemplifies what I'm talking about. It's not a substantial puzzle in itself, but I am about to spoil it, just so you know. You need to get the nurse to leave the room. You do this by placing a key on the key holder. The nurse was told to look out for this key, so she'll go return it if she sees it on the hook, leaving the room and letting you pass. Sounds a bit roundabout when I explain it, but that goal is made very, very clear in-game. Problem is, Fran's on the other side, and so she can't place the key without being spotted by the nurse. Unless you take the pills, because then the nurse isn't around. Use the pills, walk over, place the key, walk back, unuse the pills however that works, jobs are good in. But what actually happened there? Was Fran in another dimension and thus invisible to the nurse while walking past her? Was reality altered by taking that pill? It's those kinds of questions that had me trying to use the pill as little as possible. Aside from the obvious, oh my god, everything is dead and or wants to eat my organs factor. I can help but sense bad things happening as a result. Doesn't seem to have made a difference in the end, but I can inject a little roleplay into this if I want to. Don't judge me. I must admit I worried a little when I discovered that the conversation system only ever gives you two options at a time, one of which is almost always end the conversation. 
It reminds me of games where you get to pick which line your character says, but you still need to say all of them to progress, defeating the entire point of having a dialogue tree. But it does showcase the dialogue, which caught my attention pretty quickly. I found Franbo to be a strange and unsettling game, and that's not something I mean as a negative. The lack of voiceovers actually contributes to that, I feel, whatever the reason behind that design choice was. Despite having a child protagonist, this game, in case it wasn't completely sodding obvious, is not for kids. A child protagonist who, by the way, has been committed to a mental asylum in 1944. That is just about one of the worst situations I can think of. Even without all the inexplicable reality bending stuff, the death of her parents and being locked up is a hard enough situation for a 10 year old to take in. You might expect a child character to be more like, say, Pepper from Pepper's Adventures in Time. Have her state the obvious in a suspiciously eloquent way, throw in some 90 slang, cut, print. But that's a game for kids, and an educational one at that. You want the dialogue to be easily understood rather than sound genuine. Terrible comparison, actually. Don't know why I brought it up. Fran both acts and speaks like what I'd expect from a 10 year old, optimistically hopping between stating her feelings and applying her imagination to every object around her without a second thought. It's convincing writing. I'll look at the Samaritan Paradox for another example. The ending of that game made me uncomfortable, but that was due to me thinking it was either a bad twist or an unnecessary one. I haven't ruled out the possibility that it was there for shock value and nothing else, honestly, coming out of nowhere like it did. But it could also have been a bad twist executed poorly. Franbo feels very deliberate, as if it's exactly what the developers intended. Both of them. The game is made by two people, is what I'm saying. Which, considering this took me around seven hours to finish, is definitely an achievement. Some hard work must have gone into this. Maybe it's due to modern pointy clicks being nearly half as long as this, but I have to admit to feeling some fatigue towards the end. Around the same time I started spotting some typos. Look, I need to be fair, I've criticised games for far less than that, let's be honest. But with only two people making the decisions, I wonder if Franbo is closer to their original vision without it having to travel through as many hands as other titles do. In fact, I almost don't want to criticise this as a game, because the story and aesthetic are definitely the most interesting part, doubly so when you learn that some of the elements of the game are autobiographical. But there's actual puzzles and gameplay in there too, puzzles I appreciated. Figuring out codes from reading material, utilising the pills to bypass obstacles, interesting stuff. Nothing I would consider moon logic, although I did look at a walkthrough once or twice, and of course the nurse and key puzzle I talked about earlier is open to interpretation, but then again so is the entire game. But that also means he can play as Mr. Midnight and he can only carry one item because he has to hold it in his mouth while he walks around on his pocket. Ah, he's so cute. It might be better to view this as an experience, much in the same way as I described the Charnel House trilogy, although there's some actual brain teasers in Franbo. As much as I did enjoy the Charnel House trilogy, it does not have much in the way of puzzles, whereas Franbo did the other thing. Even without that, it'd certainly be a game worth discussing, as much of it appears to be metaphorical. You've probably already worked it out and decided for yourself, but if you don't like the look of the more disturbing visuals I've shown you, I can't even recommend this to you. It doesn't let up on those and you do have to take the pills at some point, so it's unavoidable. So if you're looking for something interesting, unique, worth discussing, or have an urge for dark, creepy, mysterious, or messed up looking things that must be satisfied, Framble has a lot for you to dig into. Just make sure you're comfortable with reading. No voiceovers, remember?